Here at ACT Biotech in Worcester, Massachusetts, they are attempting to bring an embryo to a stage where its stem cells can be harvested. We've used the cloning technology to actually generate early stage human embryos, embryos that are at the four to eight cell stage, to go from the early stage embryo to a blastocyst, which is a cell cluster of about 100 cells. It requires fine tuning the culture conditions as well as each step in the cloning procedure. Robert Lanza is encouraged by his research with cloned embryos from our nearest relatives, the primates. Here they've reached a crucial blastocyst stage, 100 to 200 cells where the stem cells can be harvested. He believes the applications are wide-ranging. We already know, for instance, how to turn embryonic stem cells into whole dishes full of dopamine-producing cells that could be used to treat, for instance, a patient with Parkinson's disease. By adding uh, something known as retinolic acid, we can turn these embryonic stem cells into beating heart cells. We've also already seeded those hot cells onto various synthetic scaffolds to create what we call myocardial patches so that we can fix the heart very much like you would fix a bicycle tire. Success with primates has encouraged Robert Lanza in his ambition to create whole human organs from cloned embryonic stem cells. To create an entire heart, that's the holy grail. That's a very complicated procedure and that's probably a good 10, 15 years off. Although a while off, it all sounds very promising, but there's a price to pay. When an embryo is harvested for its stem cells, it is destroyed in the process. The end of a potential life. The issue of whether this tiny ball of cells has the same rights as the rest of us is proving so controversial, many people think the research should be banned. Our poll shows while in Brazil and Turkey, two out of three people believed it should be outlawed in the USA, two out of five think this. In the UK, half think it should be banned. The right to life issues are so complex, the world is divided on whether stem cell research with cloned embryos should go forward. Great Britain still allows research into embryonic stem cells up to a 14-day limit. Health ministers in Australia can't reach a consensus on the issue. Singapore has appointed a panel of experts to study the ethical question of using embryonic stem cells and there is no law at all regulating stem cell research in Israel. The United States has banned the use of taxpayers' money in embryonic stem cell research and political pressure is building to ban it altogether. Fortunately, it hasn't stopped there because stem cell research is so important that many private bodies are funding it and many European governments are funding it. So unless you've got a universal revulsion against some kind of research, it will tend to go on. And the stuff that works, you can rest assured the law will accommodate it without turning a hair. And when that happens, the most difficult choice you may have is whether to order your new organs online or from some salesman who knocks at your door. Sir, can I have a moment of your time, please? Not interested in anything you say. Yes, sir, please. All I ask is one minute, and I can make you an offer your body cannot refuse. How old are you, sir, if you don't mind me asking? Forty. Do you know that when you're forty, your liver is not as efficient as it used to be when you were eighteen? And your heart is starting to fail, too. Yeah, so? How about a new heart? The therapeutic uh, cloning research, which tries to grow human tissues with the hope of, of replacing, let's say, damaged heart tissue, could, I'm sure, be abused. But 20 years from now, the notion that you should not use stem cells because the cells were taken, perhaps, from an egg that was fertilized and not implanted um, in an IVF clinic will strike us as equally outrageous. The whole concern comes down as to whether or not a microscopic ball of cells smaller than the head of a pin warrants the same rights and respect as an adult or a child who may die because we fail to use this technology. The greatest question for lawmakers, ethicists and the rest of us is what happens when embryonic cloning is taken to its biological conclusion. Growing a cloned human embryo in the lab beyond a few cells is proving difficult, but growing one in the womb could be much easier. Scientists are learning from cloning work with mammals, but objectors point to Dolly the sheep as evidence that it should never be allowed to happen in humans. Professor Keith Campbell was Dolly's co-creator. 
He's listened to the argument that Dolly's arthritis and early death can be blamed on the fact that she was a clone. To my knowledge, I don't think there's any evidence that Dolly aged prematurely um, compared to a, a, another animal of the same age which was produced by natural breeding techniques. Don't let it appear that I'm saying that all of the animals we produce by this technique are normal. It's a very inefficient technique and we don't understand the mechanisms which control development. So we produce some abnormal and also dead um, fetuses and animals. Despite the animal data, some scientists are forging ahead in pursuit of the ultimate aim, to clone a human. Critics ask why should anyone want to do this? One of the few compelling arguments is to give infertile couples a baby. One man actively trying to produce a human clone is Dr. Panos Savos. We are at a very advanced stage as far as our human cloning program and uh, we are obviously quite confident that we can execute uh, and we can create clone embryos that are healthy, can implant those clone embryos and yield a viable pregnancy and I hope to deliver the baby at the end of this year. Our poll asked when a human will be successfully cloned, and the most common belief is that it's already happened somewhere in secret. A third think it will happen within the next five years, while only one in seven believe there will never be a successful human clone. I think what we can assume here is that it, if it hasn't already been done, it's going to be done. We're going to wake up one day and someone will have done it. This is no longer a technical problem. This is just a question of which researchers are likely to pull it off first.